Hey guys, welcome to Adventures in Jenny Land. Today we are going to be covering everything you need to know to have a successful, fun, and worry-free trip to Yellowstone National Park. So, let's get started. I have a lot of tips for you. I have filmed this video three times now because I keep forgetting stuff. I want this to be something that you can watch and have everything that you need to know when you are going to be camping in Yellowstone. To start, the reason why I'm focusing on camping is because that's what we did. Uh, we did tent camping. So this is going to be a little bit more specific to um, accommodations for camping. I will include some information about staying at a lodge and all that jazz too. So this video is for everyone. Of course, I'm plugged in and I hate myself. <laughs> Why? One more thing before we get into it. Have you, uh, have you subscribed yet to Adventures in Jenny Land? Wait, what? No? Oh my gosh. You have to subscribe. It's so important. Hit that little subscribe button and the little bell next to it. That way you can be notified whenever I release a new video. It also helps the channel to grow when we have more subscribers. Also, if you find value in this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. That also helps the channel to grow and it helps me to know what videos you like, what videos you hate, and uh, just, you know, your general feelings about life. So I like to know. <sighs> Tip. Number one. Tip number one is to plan early. And by planning early, I mean months in advance. And this applies to camping and to hotel. You need to book your campsite or your hotel probably at least two months in advance. I would say more like three. You need to check the Yellowstone National Park website. That is where you're going to book the hotel or the campsite and just see when you can start booking and then get it in. If, if you're not much of a planner, I would say uh, you, need to, uh, you need to fix that because you need to plan early. Tip number two, when should you go to Yellowstone National Park? I'm going to recommend just go during the high season, which is May through September, even into October. This year, 2020, was a very unique year in that we had a pandemic going on and some of the campgrounds and some of the lodges did not open at all in Yellowstone. They are only operating at like half capacity right now, which is good. Uh, but again, that goes back to tip number one, you need to plan early and that's why. May through September is the tourist season, it's the high season, it's when everybody's going to be there. So, so you need to plan for crowds. Um, but by crowds, it's not. It's not that bad, at least it wasn't this year. If you're going to go to Yellowstone at any other time, like October through April, you need to check with the website and see what roads are even open, if there's any campsites or any accommodations open. Yellowstone gets a ton of snow and is very, very cold, so it's a lot more rugged in the off season. So check it out on the website. Tip number three. How long should you stay in Yellowstone National Park? Again, good question. It all depends on you and your schedule, but I would say at least three days with the ideal time would be four to five days. The reason I say four to five days to do it right is that you need a lot of time. Yellowstone is huge. It's a huge park. You're gonna be doing a lot of driving and you need to plan you know, at least one major site a day. So if you really wanna see everything there is to see, four to five days, you're really going to be doing it right. Tip number four, where the heck are you gonna stay in Yellowstone National Park? Good question, I'm glad you asked. Here is the lowdown. I recommend staying in the park. And that goes back to tip number one where you need to plan early. When you're in the park, you're close to everything. You don't have to keep driving in every single day. It's just more convenient. You can book a campsite or a hotel room within the park. When you are booking a campsite, you need to have the exact length of your vehicle plus your tent or the exact length of your RV, your van, your trailer, etc. You cannot reserve a site unless you have this information. The reason that you need this information is that Yellowstone is going to match you up and the length of all your accoutrements uh, with a campsite that will fit you. So that gets to our next point. You cannot just reserve a specific campsite within a specific campground at Yellowstone. They are going to assign you a campsite when you arrive and check in. That's why they need that information of the length of your vehicle plus the length of your tent. You need to check when the campgrounds are open for the year. 
and when they're going to close. Like I said earlier, 2020 was a very unique year and half campgrounds weren't even open. So that, that played a lot into where we wanted to camp. Thankfully, the one place that I wanted to camp, Canyon, was open and that's like the central location, um, the most centralized campground in the entire park. That's why I wanted to stay there. Plus it's really close to Grand Canyon of Yellowstone and I wanted to be there. I think it's a great campground. I think it's one of the best options. Lots of trees, very quiet, great facilities, and um, it's centrally located so you can see everything. I don't know anything about the lodges other than they are super expensive. I was looking up prices and they're anywhere between $200 and $500 a night. And during high season, they're gonna be on the higher end. So if you wanna go that route, go for it. Um, if you want to go cheaper, go with a campsite. Finally, the, the final thing I want to note for um, tip number four where you can stay in Yellowstone is just check the Yellowstone website. They have a great website. You're going to book your campsite or your um, hotel room through that and it will give you all of the information of what hotels, lodges are open, what campgrounds are open, so on and so forth. So use the website. It is your friend. Tip number five. What kind of clothes should you pack? This gets a lot of people because you would think in the summertime it's going to be warm. You're also dealing with the fact that you are in the mountains and you're on a very high plateau when you are in Yellowstone. It gets really, really cold at night. I remember when I was a kid at getting down into the 20s in July and then during the day it was in the 70s and 80s. So you need to be prepared for those huge swings in temperature. We went August 31st through September 5th of this year and the very first day we were there, we missed it, but the night before it had snowed and it had all melted by the time we got there, but overnight it was in the low 20s and we were not prepared, even with bringing extra stuff. So be sure to uh, to bring some, some really good sleeping bags, hats, gloves, boots, etc. You don't know what you're gonna run into. Tip number six, food. My favorite, I love to eat, as you can tell by my fat belly. Anywho, food. For food, you need to be prepared. Again, 2020 was a unique year. Some of the restaurants and things that are in the park were not open. Uh, but since we were camping, we brought all of our food in with us. We stayed the night in Cody, Wyoming the night before, about an hour and a half from the western entrance of Yellowstone National Park. So we went grocery shopping there. We made all of our foil packs that we're gonna use for dinner and we got burgers and steaks. Everything was just ready to go and brought it all into the park. Um, that was one thing that I couldn't find online. I, I couldn't see, are there grocery stores in Yellowstone? And I'm going to say that answer is no. There are general stores. Um, they're nothing like a grocery store, really. General stores, let's cover that. Every major hub in the park where you're gonna have like a campground, your lodges, and then your general store. Each general store is gonna have like a ton of souvenirs, um, some camping gear in case you forget something. They have a grocery section that has like a lot of different processed foods, stuff for s'mores, ice cream, um, you know, pop, soda. Uh, there was a small vegetable section, a small fruit section and uh, lots of snacks, lots of snacky type foods. So you will be able to get some food at the, at the general stores. One thing that I was very surprised about was the amazingly large alcohol section at the Canyon General Store. I mean, they had like hard liquor, they had wine, and then they had um, like individual cans of, you know, like different kinds of beers and seltzers and all that kind of stuff. It was pretty cool. That was that was a surprise to me. I, I didn't find that online. I'm gonna say if you're camping to bring most of your food in, it's gonna save you money in the long run. You're not gonna have to eat out. And plus you get the joy of cooking around a campfire, which is super fun. <laughs> if you're staying in a lodge, I'm assuming that they're gonna have some kind of restaurants there for you to eat and all that jazz. And yeah, there are restaurants, like in Mammoth, there's a bunch of different like little, little stores and restaurants and things that you can eat at. Moving into tip number seven. All right, you're in Yellowstone. What should you see? Okay, there are some things that you absolutely have to see if you are in Yellowstone. If you do not see these, you did not do Yellowstone in my opinion. And those would be 
of course, Old Faithful, the Grand Prismatic Spring, Mammoth Hot Springs, and the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. And if you have some extra time, Grand Teton National Park is to the south. You can drive there from the center of the park from Canyon in about an hour and a half, two hours, and it is well worth your time. There are other places in Yellowstone that I would recommend, but um, I cannot do so because this year there were two huge chunks of road that were uh, blocked off for whatever reason. I think they're doing construction or something. There was like the mud volcano and all these like sulfur pits and things that I really wanted to see that we were not able to see. I would say those are gonna be must sees as well, but I don't know if those roads are gonna be open in um, 2021 and beyond. I'm sure they're going to be. So check those out as well. But I would say Old Faithful, Grand Prismatic, Canyon, and Mammoth Hot Springs are gonna be what you absolutely have to see in Yellowstone National Park. There's a million other things you can see too. Norris Geyser Basin is amazing. Um, and then there's a lot of little side, uh, smaller places that you can go and see. Tip number eight. What time of the day should you go to each of these locations? I'm going to say you need to get to your main spot early in the day. And by early, I mean get there at like 8.30 in the morning. That way you're gonna be able to find parking. You're going to be able to not be um, encumbered by a ton of people. And you're gonna be able to get the best pictures, the best experience. Um, you're basically gonna have the place more to yourself. And that's very important to me. So get there early and do it right. Tip number nine, cell service meaning cellular phones. This was a tip that I could not find anywhere online, but I did find a couple of things that said that it was crappy, and it was. That's just the way it is. There are little pockets of um, cell service all around the park. Mammoth Hot Springs is one of them. Uh, Canyon Campground uh, General Store area is one of them. Basically, any of the major hubs you're going to be able to have phone service. Make sure you're downloading any kind of maps. If you need to send a text, make a phone call, or send an email, you need to be doing that when you are within one of those areas where the signal is stronger. Tip number 10. Parking and driving information. There is limited parking at the parking lots everywhere in the park. As far as like, if you're going to Old Faithful, Old Faithful is huge, it's its own, you know, area. So they've got a lot of parking there and then you get to like Grand Prismatic that probably has like 100 parking spots and that fills up quick. Every place is gonna have, you know, a variable amount of parking. So again, try to get there early so that you can take advantage of that. As far as driving goes, the speed limit is 45 miles an hour during the day and it goes down to 35 miles per hour at night. There are little turnoffs, like little, uh, little areas that you can pull off the road and park if you want to take pictures of animals or of any of the bubbling brooks or different geysers and things. So do not just stop in the middle of the road and start taking pictures. You might get hit by a car. Yeah, just, just, be, just be aware of what's going on and try to be careful and keep your eyes on the road. Also, another thing that you need to know for driving is gas stations. Are there gas stations in Yellowstone National Park? And the answer is yes, there are. There are gas stations at every major hub, usually like four pumps, and they have, I believe they have regular and diesel. And I mean, it's gonna be a little bit more pricey than just, you know, normal everyday prices, but you're within the national park, so. Don't worry, you do not need to go outside of the park to get gasoline. Tip number 11 is animal safety. You know, we all go to Yellowstone wanting to see things that we don't normally see. Uh, bears, wolves, moose, elk, bison, prairie dogs, different birds. There's lots and lots of animals to see, but you need to remember to respect the animals. Yellowstone is their home. You are a visitor in their home. So there are a couple of recommendations for keeping yourself safe and keeping the animals safe. So for bear and bison, you need to stay 100 yards away. Think of a football field. You need to be that length away from one of those. Bears and bisons can charge very quickly and they can kill you if they hit you. Um, so you need to be really careful. I, I, every year, every year there are people that get gored by a bison, um, 
being mauled by a bear doesn't happen as often, but the bison, you know, people get really close within like 25 yards and it, it startles them and they crash into them. And uh, do they deserve it? I'm not gonna go there, but yes, yes they do. Don't get that close to the animals. If you really wanna get a good picture, get a zoom lens. Another thing is bear spray. They sell bear spray at all of the general stores. They even have little holsters for it. And you know, I'm, I'm on the fence about bear spray. I think, yeah, it's definitely a good thing if you're gonna be doing backwoods camping and that kind of stuff. But if you're just sticking to the boardwalks, not going into any of the wild areas, it's really not, not a necessity. I know I was talking to some people that the main thing is that you just don't wanna startle a bear if you're out hiking. You wanna be making some noise so that the bear knows that you're around. Um, some people even attach like a little bell to their backpack just so that there's some kind of noise and you're not just like, oh, hey bear. And the bear's like, ah, and kills you. Yeah. Okay. That's tip number 11, animal safety. Be nice to the animals, cool. Tip number 12 is also animal related, but domesticated animals. Pets, are pets allowed in Yellowstone? Yes, yes they are. You need to keep them on a leash and pick up after them, obviously, that's normal. But also there are some restrictions. The pets can only accompany people in developed areas and they have to stay within one hundred feet of roads. They cannot go into the back country. They're not allowed on hiking trails, boardwalks in the back country or in thermal areas. And you can't just leave them tied up to a post or unattended in any way. They have to be always with a person. Obviously, don't leave your pet in a car without ventilation, all that jazz. And you have to clean up after your pet. There are no kennels in Yellowstone, but there are some in the surrounding communities. So you can look that up. And as far as service animals, of course they are allowed. You can bring them all throughout the park and in all park facilities, but they have to be on a leash. And that's about all the information that I could find on pets. Okay, we are getting down to the nitty gritty. Tip number 13 is firewood. This was something that I could not figure out online. I, I know that you can't bring in firewood from, say, I, I live in Illinois. I'm not gonna bring firewood from Illinois to Wyoming because of invasive creatures that could be living in it, so on and so forth. I knew that you could buy firewood in Yellowstone. I just didn't know where. So I figured that out along the way. We actually bought some firewood outside of the park in Cody, Wyoming and brought that in. And then we discovered that you can buy firewood at the general stores and at the campground like check-in area. There's a little store area and you can buy firewood there along with kindling and they also give you matches, so that's nice. And it's good firewood, it's dry, it lights very easily, it comes in boxes and there's like an accelerant in there that you can use to get the fire started really quickly. So yeah, that that's pretty great. And it's about seven or eight dollars a box. We went through two to three boxes a night. All right guys, tip number 14 is laundry and showers. In normal years, there are shower facilities for the campgrounds and there is laundry, lots and lots of laundry facilities. In 2020, because of the pandemic, all showers, in the campgrounds in Yellowstone National Park were closed. That was a problem. I ended up having to wash my hair the one time I washed it while we were camping in the dishwashing sink at the campgrounds. And I will tell you more about that in a later tip, but that was fun. Ice cold water, it was cold outside. <laughs> Joys of camping. What are you gonna do? It was fine. But yes, um, there are shower facilities and there are laundry facilities at every campground. Tip number 15, getting to the dishwashing situation. So in Yellowstone National Park, you cannot, when you're camping, you cannot wash your dishes at the campsite because of the uh, food smells and the oils and things can attract bears later in the evening or during the day when you're not around. So in between, there's, there's bathroom facilities, obviously, a few in each uh, campground section. And in between the two bathrooms, there is a dishwashing sink that is specifically for dishwashing. Um, it's got just the water, the sink, and a garbage can. You're not gonna wanna have a bunch of food particles going down into that or a bunch of oil or anything, uh, but it's just for the washing the dishes. So, you know, bring your drying towel, bring your little tub, and bring your soap and your sponge and get that all done and then you bring it back to the campsite. Also, if you need to wash your hair in emergencies, it worked out. It was just very cold. 
very, very cold. Tip number 16, when you are camping in Yellowstone National Park, you have to put away everything that has the potential to have a food smell. So if you're camping, like we would pull out our stove, I have a couple of kitchen uh, bins, and at night we would have to take all of that stuff and put that back in the car. Yellowstone National Park also provides bear boxes that you can lock that stuff into if you do not want to load it back into your car. It's kind of a pain, but um, getting eaten by a bear is even more of a pain, so I'm gonna say worth it. But just so you know, that's something you're gonna be doing. Uh, perhaps that'll make you be a little bit more utilitarian about what you're going to bring because you're pretty much gonna have to pack most of it away every single night. Getting down to the nitty gritty, these are my last two camping tips. Tip number 17 is download the Yellowstone National Park Service app. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Give me a moment. Oh, cell phone, where are you? This app is great. This app gives you live geyser predictions. So like if you're trying to look for, oh, what time is Old Faithful going to go off? Right here, it's gonna give you that information. It's saying today, it's gonna be going off at 2.52 p.m. So an hour from now, pretty cool. And it updates all day long and there are six different geysers on here. So that alone is enough for this Yellowstone app. Like I said earlier, there's not a lot of cell service. So one of the cool things about this app is that you can download all the information you need. Um, help, you know, helps you to know like camping, where to stay, road closures, self-guided tours, what to see, um, information about the things that you're looking at and all that jazz. So definitely download this. It is the Yellowstone National Park Service app and it's got like a little bison and a geyser. Um, as its little icon, so make sure to download that. All right, guys, last but not least, tip number 18, which is not a tip at all. It is the total cost of a five-day camping trip at Yellowstone National Park. This is how much money Gorn and I spent for this trip that we took. Okay, well, let's get out the handy-dandy calculator and uh, see what we spent. Gas, we spent $225 on gas. We did not rent a car, so that saved us money, but we were driving from Illinois, the Chicagoland area, all the way out to Wyoming, and it was about $225 round trip, and that includes the price of a full tank of gas within Yellowstone National Park itself. So 225. Next, we have the campsite. I booked a campsite in Canyon Campgrounds for $221, and that was for five nights. That was uh, with tax. Next, the entrance fee. It costs $35 to enter Yellowstone National Park, and that fee is good for seven days. If you are going to be going to more than two national parks in one year, it would be better for you to buy the National Park Service's annual pass, which I believe is $80 to $85 with the processing fee. Next, we went down to Grand Teton National Park, so we paid another entrance fee of $35. Groceries. We spent about $200 on groceries for the week's worth of camping. We got steaks, we got burgers, and then we did foil packs with a bunch of different meats and vegetables and things like that. There were some snacks, and um, I'm gonna include ice in that, in that number as well. So that's $200. Souvenirs, there's tons of things that you can buy in Yellowstone. We don't do a ton of souvenirs, but we bought some socks, we bought some gifts for friends and family, and we got stickers and magnets. I have stickers for my suitcase that I always put on it, and then magnets for our fridge. I always get one wherever we travel. All right, general store purchases. We spent about $100. Now, we did spend $200 on groceries, just regular food, but at the general store, we ended up buying, I would get like a Bud Light seltzer and like a Mick Ultra or something like that, and then a bag of this really dope dark chocolate um, trail mix, and it was delightful. So we ended up doing that every day. So we spent $100 at the general store. Firewood, we spent $150 on firewood for the five days of camping. So when you add all of that up, it cost us $1,066 for five days of camping in Yellowstone National Park. Now, you can definitely do this trip cheaper. 
you could probably cut this in half. The campsite's always gonna be the same price, you know, as well as the entrance fees to get into the parks, but you could save money on groceries, souvenirs, general store purchases, firewood, and gas. It also just depends on you know where you're driving from. So yeah, uh, a little over a grand for a week's worth of camping. We call it, uh, we call that solid. So that's it. Those are my 18 tips for a successful Yellowstone camping trip. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell next to it so you can see all of the different adventures in Jenny Land that are going on. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely recommend a trip to Yellowstone. You need to get out there, it's beautiful. It's, uh, it's a national treasure. Thanks for joining me. If you would like more information about Yellowstone, I've got a whole series on Yellowstone. Click above and you will be able to hit the, uh, the playlist and I hope you enjoy it. Be sure to like and comment. I love hearing from you. And as always, keep it classy folks and I will see you next time.